Well, joining me now is Nosike Mwajide, one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company. Thank you for coming through to us, Nosike. Well, uh, talking about <laughs> the central bank's uh, decision to raise the CRR, that has actually been roiling uh, the markets. Now, one of your burning economic uh, issues there is that the interest, rate, interest rates are spiking. Now, the CBN had actually argued that they are trying to contain the liquidity in the system. But then, just like my first guest said, inflation looking at the inflation basket is not really the issue because it's cost reflective. So how do you reconcile what the central bank is trying to do and what we're seeing in the inflation target? Okay, um, inflation is already projected to rise uh, <clears throat> in the coming months. So this um, constra constraint to liquidity, if you will, I mean, the rise in CRR will take away um, close to three, four hundred billion out of liquidity. So, I mean, if you reduce liquidity in bank rates will rise. Interbank inter rates rising means that um, investors that will ordinarily, you know, have uh, invested in you know, fixed income um, treasuries that went to maybe the stock market or elsewhere and um, the forex, increased forex demand and all that, they will come back to, to the market. So it takes pressure off forex demand. You take pressure off forex demand, you have, um, so you have a strengthening, somewhat strengthening of the currency, so imported inflation is then reduced. So commodities like uh, like wheat and uh, sugar and corn that we import, you have a lower prices for them. So that's a direct transmission to, to commodity prices per se. But for domestic commodities, uh, we're yet to see if there will be any effect. Without, I mean, we doubt if there will be any direct effect on domestic commodity prices, so to speak. And how will this impact your inflation outlook? Well, um, imported inflation is. Um, it's, it's played a significant, significant part in, in inflation. It might, a couple of, a couple of basic, basis points increase in the coming months. We don't, we don't expect, I mean, right now, everything is, the impact on the market is all anticipated. We're yet to see the, I mean, the effect of the CRR debit per se because it hasn't been affected. When it does, then the markets will have a feel of, you know, how much impact will have on forex demand, the reduction of forex demand, and, and if it will indeed lower, lower the inflation, reported inflation. Um, component of inflation. Okay, looking at uh, the top of your burning economic issues, of course, is the oil uh, market. We saw Brent fall below $60. That was yesterday. And in fact, as at this morning, uh, oil price continues to fall. Uh, that's because of the coronavirus scare. Now, Saudi Arabia's um, uh, energy minister had said that OPEC Plus would step in to bolster prices if needed. But this statement did not assuage the market. Are you concerned the prices of oil uh, might um, drop further? Well, uh, the market has already taken into consideration the fact that um, Libya, a, a member of OPEC, um, due to some internal problems, its own internal issues, its uh, output is down by about 800,000 barrels as we speak. And that has not had a significant impact on prices. So um, OPEC plus, they plan to add an additional, take away an additional 500,000 barrels from the market. I mean, if the market is already down, if an OPEC member has 800,000 barrels off already and the market, there's no significant impact on the market, then is, it remains to be seen, okay, so what, how much more output, how much more can you, by how much more can you cut output in the coming, in the coming months, so to speak? I mean, the, the forecast for oil, the growth in oil demand, they say, by the EIE is about 1.3 million barrels. Um, the coronavirus is poised to take about impact demand by about 200,000 barrels in the next two to three months. I mean, the output for China, major buyer of oil, is, has been slashed by the GDP growth outlook has been slashed by 1.2%. So, demand, global demand, is poised to slow. Um, supply is, you know, is on the is on the increase. And even what they've planned to do so far, they've had the extra boost from output cuts in Libya, even though invol invol involuntarily, has yet to ha have a significant impact on prices. So, I mean, it's doing all it can. I mean, OPEC members will be, I mean, right now, Nigeria's, Nigeria's, uh, Nigeria has finally complied with its OPEC quota, about 1.7 million barrels. Nigeria might be forced to even lower, you know, its output to 1.6. Yeah, 1. but 6, if, that, if that happens, if OPEC decides to uh, cut its out output, what uh, would be the implications of that? Um, Nigeria might be asked to lower further. I mean, if we lower further, our, our budget benchmark for production is about 2.2 million barrels. Mm -hmm. we, 
at, at 1.7, we are considerably or significantly below targets already. So any further, you know, reduction in output is, is uh, negative for our forex earnings, which is negative for the exchange rates, for external reserves. Because we've already seen the yes. external reserve drop in Dropping further. crucially to close to $37 billion. And that has a transcendent effect on every other thing for inflation, for prices, for our, as you know, Nigeria is a, you know, import-dependent economy for consumables. So any, I mean, we've seen external reserves fall from middle of last year. Um, losing that average about forty million dollars a day down, and it's it's poised to continue. So with this additional pressure on the reserves, it will have you no know, transcendent effect on the exchange rate and prices and everything. So it's a, it's a negative. So what's your outlook for the oil market and uh, you know the near to medium term, and what do you think would probably drive it aside from this coronavirus thing? Um, um, the markets we're waiting to see how effective OPEC. I mean, the next two to three weeks, OPEC would meet and decide how much more they are going to cut, if they are actually going to cut. And markets will, see, will want to see how, how members comply with that and how, you know, if, if Nigeria just managed to finally comply to 1.7 million barrels, I mean, what, how are you going to share the output cuts? And will members be willing to even go above where Saudi Arabia in the past has gone above its quota and cuts by an extra million barrels? Just because it has the Saudi Ar Aramco, which, you know, investors... Everyone has an eye on oil prices for the um, Saudi Aramco stocks. If you want your stock price to rise, obviously it depends on oil prices. So you need oil prices to be as high as possible. So they've, done, they've gone the extra mile to bolster prices. So investors, the markets will be waiting to see how far the OPEC members are willing to go to bolster oil prices. All right, thank you for your time, Nosiki. Nosiki Wajide is one of the research analysts with Financial Derivatives Company. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll look at the recent plan by the federal government to find a lasting solution to Nigeria's electricity problems. Just stay with us.